Hello guys, welcome everybody to Mando Monday. This is the series where you guys ask the questions and I, of course, answer them. This could be to do with anything related to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, CSGO Investing, or any future update related one. If that's Source 2, an operation, or something recently like the Rio Major stickers. And if you guys have a question for next week's video, make sure you leave it down below in the comment section, ask Mando, and then ask your question. It's usually easiest and best for me to find it that way. And this week, there are some very juicy questions, as well as a quick few announcements and a couple talking points before the questions. But before we go any further, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button and of course subscribe. And here's a quick word from my video sponsor, Skins Monkey. Now today's video sponsor is of course Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is currently the easiest and also fastest way you can buy, but most importantly, trade your CSGO skins. All you have to do is make sure you have your trade link and on your first trade, if you have a leftover balance, it goes towards your current balance that can be used the next time you end up trading skins. It has three ways you can inspect, but most importantly has a very in-depth inspect feature that you can see corners on a karambit for an example, that you can't really see otherwise unless you have the item in game. If you end up topping up your balance, make sure to use promo code MANDO to get up to a 35% deposit bonus and a free $5 on the first trade. So here's a quick PSA on some recent drama. No one likes drama. I hate it myself, but I want to be transparent as possible with you guys because I feel like that's the most fair. And some of you are probably wondering what's going on. It's not even that big of a deal. But recently I made a lot of market updates towards Stockholm and Antwerp because the new Rio Major stickers aren't really that liked at this point. And that's been driving up the popularity as well as the price for some of these capsules. Some people have been saying I'm a little biased towards Stockholm because I own some myself, but I also own Antwerp. I enjoy both of them. And in this situation, I'm just the messenger and giving you guys all the choices and you decide what you do. And then I'm giving my personal opinion on top of that. Some of the reasons I wasn't so big on Antwerp and still am not is the supply is extremely high and a lot more high than you're seeing on the Steam market. People were wondering why I was suggesting you sell these capsules soon is because people were struggling for months really ever since they came off that 75% off sale to sell them for that 25 cent mark. There's people who want to get out of it, and this is your opportunity to, to go into something older that's a little more stable. But both majors are great for investments for different reasons. Stockholm, because it is so low, is guaranteed to go up over time, but Antwerp investing right now is a big opportunity for a lot of different people if you want to hold your current ones or buy more because they're so cheap in price. See, going into Stockholm right now doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's just hit an all-time high. I think it's probably going to keep going up and then probably drop off and have a stable price for the rest of the year maybe even go lower. Antwerp, because it is so low and it's just starting to go up, this could be the beginning of a whole thing for Antwerp. But I thought I'd just get that out of the air and clear it up with you guys. And speaking of both of them, I guess I'll show my investments for Antwerp and Stockholm to clear some things up. And that kind of leads us into one of our questions. How much Stockholm do you own personally? So with that, I'll show you guys my Antwerp and Stockholm investments to be very fair with you guys. So I guess I'll show you guys my sticker investment side of things. Now, this is Stockholm and some Antwerp ones, mostly Stockholm stickers, but I'll get into the capsules for both majors after. Most people are just going to assume right off the bat that I'm a Stockholm enjoyer, which I am, but also that I'm investing in them pretty heavily. Now, the difference between investment and this, mostly I am keeping these Stockholm stickers for myself as of right now. I have been crafting so much and so much more than I really ever have been this past few months and these stickers are cheap they look very nice same goes with Antwerp but I just enjoy these a little more especially the Copenhagen Flames ones I have a whole inventory based off of them because I think they're so nice Virtus Pro as well and if I ever want to change something up like the pain gaming I have these for the future that I can do that and I'm pretty happy with my investments as of right now especially the sticker side of things because I can create things like this obviously I have a whole Copenhagen Flames inventory but I like basic skins and this kind of does that perfectly if I want to change it up every once in a while I can make something like this when in two or three months or maybe even a year if these stickers are 4x the price I'm probably not going to want to pay for them then so I can pay for them now these are the best stickers we've seen inside of CSGO in such a long time so I'm picking them up now and taking that advantage or every once in a while I can create something really interesting like this Virtus Pros look pretty cool on this for an example, or I can create meme crafts like this Oni Pixels USP, but in a Stockholm format. And as it goes for my investments into Antwerp, let's take a look. So capsules are pretty interesting. These have all been bought for the most part during the 75% off sale for Antwerp and Stockholm. So I really am on the capsule side of things, not really buying too much more than right now, just because it's, I don't see a huge point. Stickers, sure, I, I see that opportunity, but for the most part, not really. Like I said earlier, these have a huge potential because they are so cheap and they are at a really low price for the most part and these once again kind of similar to the hollows they're an investment but also at the same time they're just for me if i want to create crafts 
So during this, you know, entire hiatus where I hold these, if they go up, that's great, but they're not really for that purpose. They're just for me for the future, kind of future proofing myself. So I don't have to buy any more stickers because they're probably going to go up either way. Of course, I have some more capsules, but you guys get the point. And for Stockholm, it's the exact same thing in my capsules container. We have a few, there's a few different ones here and there. Some challengers, of course, some contenders more challengers legends contenders once again not a whole lot for stockholm because i got burned so heavy on rmr but i do have a few here and there and whenever there are some price dips or i'm on a third party site for an example and i see some for a very good discount stockholm antwerp doesn't matter if it's capsules or stickers i'm probably going to pick them up because i believe in them personally so hopefully that answers some questions and also cleared up some drama that was in the air i guess even though it was only like two people who didn't like what I was talking about because no one likes drama and it's just, it's not a fun time. Now, some videos that are going to be coming very soon. A couple are going to be not so much debunking, but somewhat of exposing. There's been a lot of shady stuff with investing into the real major so far on YouTube that I really don't like and that I just think is really shady stuff. And if you see any investment videos towards Rio at this point in time, don't listen to it. I don't see a point in listening to it either. It's way too early to tell. There's not enough data just whatsoever to prove if these are going to be good or not. And we don't even know what's going 75% off. We don't know if the Rio storage units are or whatever. But with that all the way, let's hop into some questions for this week's video. Our first question up here is from call me what they want. We're just going to call you that, okay? He says, ask Manda, what are your thoughts on IEM gold stickers? And what are my thoughts on the golds in general? I personally like them or we'll be buying them for some crafts. So the new gold stickers, I actually really enjoy them. They're like the only things I like about Rio 2022 as of right now. My opinions might change in the future, but I'm not so sure. The past few majors, whenever stickers come out, I usually know if I like them right off the bat. But then again, I kind of liked RMR when they came out, especially some of the golds. And of course, those were really bad. Later on, I'm looking back at them. We have to go back to that time, though, to kind of put yourselves in that position. Because in 2020, those were not bad stickers for at the time. Before that, we had Cato 19, which were very, very similar. Face It 2018, Krakow 2017. And Krakow 2017, when they first came out, I don't know if you guys know this, they were horrible as well. So we never... We don't really know what's going to happen to these stickers in the future. They could be really popular one day. I doubt it. But the gold stickers for this year are pretty unique. They look very, very nice on like a slate, for an example. It just looks super, super clean. But I also like Antwerp and Stockholm golds as well, especially some of those black bordered ones. Our next question up here is from Visky, and he says, Ask Mando, how do you feel about investing into the glove and breakout case? I see them going to 80 RMB in about a year, and I'm going to go into them then. So as it goes right now for investing in the cases, it's actually not the worst time to do so. Everyone's eyes are on stickers from Stockholm, Antwerp, and even Rio. So people are kind of selling these. And especially when that 75% off sale hits, we're probably going to see some sort of decrease in price even more on some of these. But 80 RMB, for those of you wondering, in USD is 11 US dollars. And these cases aren't that expensive at the moment. So 11 bucks for these, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. But that's just, of course, my personal opinion. There's a few reasons behind it. Now, these cases in the entire market have just hit their all-time high. So unless there's no operation next year and a limited amount of majors, which I think there's already confirmed too, we'd have to go through a whole nother bull run similar to this year. And the market would just have to go crazy once again out of nowhere. And that's the only really real way in situation and scenario I would see that happening. But even if that happens, I think these are most likely going to go to maybe $8 max, maybe 10 because there's still a lot of these out there in people's inventories and storage units. It's going to be pretty interesting to see going forward. Our next question up here is from Rami J. And he says, ask Mando, where do you see Boston signatures in one year from now holding capsules with twists and symbol golds? So Boston signatures are very interesting, but they're kind of very similar to other golds like Krakow 2017 or really any higher tier sticker it's a very very niche market there's not going to be a whole lot of people buying these and the people who are are going to be buying them really whenever these are a pretty solid investment because they look good they're rare and not a whole lot of people know about them if i'm going to be honest when people think of golds most people think of krakow 2017 especially as of recently because they've been hyped up so much but i think these if they get unboxed a lot by sparkles or someone in a video that's when i think these could get up a lot of attention and start to get hyped up quite a bit but that would of course only be for the short term for the long term of things they are going to go up but in the next year it's going to be very interesting to see because we are getting so many different stickers inside of cs in a very short period of time like i've talked about earlier the oversaturation on stickers is a real thing the burnout is real as well and because these are a niche market 
it's going to be interesting to see how these go the next year. Now, this is just one of the capsules. There are so many Boston capsules for some reason. They have like 20 of them. Different individual ones, I mean, not just listed on the market. But there's like a hundred of probably each. And they've been getting somewhat of hype recently. Just this one, for an example. I know it's not the exact one. We kind of get the point. They just kind of sell randomly throughout the year. So I think all that's really going to take for these things to really go up is time. But love to hear what you guys think about this one as well. Our next question up here is from Jay Birch. We're just going to call you that. He says, I know it's a bit off normal from questions you normally receive, but what are your favorite skins slash stickers? Aesthetically, not monetarily. So doesn't matter the price. What are my favorite skins overall? So recently, my taste on skins has really, really changed. I've gone from liking the whole hype thing of skins where they look really, really insane to do something very basic. I love the slates. I love the elite builds. I'm pretty sure it's called the Polymag for the M4A4 from the Dreams and Nightmares of Recoil case. Most of these are all horrible investments, but they're just such a nice skin. I like guns in real life. And the Polymag for the M4 looks like a real life M4. And it just looks so, so cool. And because they look so clean, it in just different solid colors, they go really well with stickers in my personal opinion. And as it goes for like an artwork type of weapon, I guess I would say the Medusa is probably my favorite. I had one way back in the day. And it's basic, but also very, very nice. It's just a really cool concept of a skin, in my personal opinion. And as it goes for stickers, I mean, if you can't tell, I'm a pretty big Copenhagen Flames fan. By far, probably some of my favorite stickers in the CSGO recently. So I like these and probably Cato 14s, specifically Dignitas, and also Dreamhack 2014 Dignitas stickers being foil and hollow have made a whole, whole bunch of crafts with those i've also had a bunch of those in my inventory last year probably had five to ten different crafts for digging toss hollows last year for 2014 dream hack anyway but they were just way too expensive for me to keep in there so i had to get rid of them and i just went to the other stuff as well but what is your favorite skin without the dollar value on it is it cattle 14 like i feel like a lot of people are gonna say or is it something very basic you know some people like the dragon lore straight up or is it just something very basic in game? You know, the Op Atheris, really, really cool skin. I know that's some people's favorites. The budget higher tier skin, for an example. Our next question up here is from Arvis, and he says, where do you see CSGO in five years? So <laughs> five years is a long time, guys. And five years ago, I would have probably predicted CSGO was not going to be in the place or position that it is today, where it's still on top and skins have gone up the way they are. And a lot of things can change in that period as well. Like I've previously stated, I think CSGO is only one or two big gambling websites away that are going to get shut down by valve to add another seven day trade hold if we have another situation with csgo wild or something like that or csgo lotto where it's rigged by people who owning it are youtubers for an example that could be really really bad and if trading did get another seven day trade hold for an example i think that would heavily affect the scene but if things keep going the way they are skins are getting hyped up the way they are tournaments are going very well and there's no big scandals csgo is really only up from here and i do think in the next four or five years i think we'll start to see a threshold for skins where they're going to reach a certain point and they're really not going to go any past that i mean you're looking at that right now with cato 14 stickers cato 14 and even 15 stickers have hit a point and the threshold where they're really not going up much more now they have been some individual ones this past year but for the most part, they've been very stagnant at a very stable price. They haven't really gone up. They also really haven't gone down. That's because I think they've hit a price point where it's a very niche market. Very similar to the question we had earlier with some of the Boston Golds, even though these are very, very high tier. Unless we have a new wave of new people coming into the game with lots of money, we're not going to see those move whatsoever. That's going to be pretty interesting to see. As well as in the next five years, I think we'll probably see Source 2, hopefully a yearly operation or something completely new to the game. I want that completely overhauled and redesigned eventually. Hopefully new anti-cheat and 128 tick on MM servers, but 128 tick, I don't know if that's going to happen. That pretty much wraps it up for Mando Monday this week. I know it is a little different. I know it wasn't so much the questions, but me showing my investments, but I thought I would show you guys because a lot of you people have been wondering. Part of the reason I haven't showed a lot of my investments the past couple of years is because when you're a YouTuber, especially over 12K, for an example, it's kind of controversial. I used to do it all of the time, but a video about six to eight months ago, I had a whole bunch of MLG stickers and people started to buy those up on the market, driving up the price. People were blaming me for that. So it's a pretty touchy and interesting area. In most videos I do, when it comes to CSGO investing, I'll never talk about something I don't believe in myself or don't invest in personally, because I feel like that's just a scam. But when I do do that, I tell you guys that I'm invested into it, but I also give you two or three different options at the same time that are very similar. Kind of like what I did with Stockholm and Antwerp the past couple of days. If you don't want to go into either of those, and if you want to buy in or sell, I give you guys a whole bunch of different options, different opportunities that are very similar to one another that have the same potential but I also give you different options than those two majors specifically. And that's why I think it benefits people a lot more. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys have questions for next week's video, leave them down below or any other video to be exact. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.